Hey everybody, Tony D with another screenwriting tip and today we're talking a little bit about world building. How to build your world and uh, make it consistent. Um, the number one rule of world build building is to make it consistent. And what I mean by that is uh, the physics of your universe have to always be the same. So if you have a universe where there's magic, you, uh, which uh, you know a lot of people do, the, the rules have to be consistent. So, for instance, uh, in the Pineys, um, we have witches. And uh, witches, and they're the, they're the more classical supernatural witch. So, uh, the rule of thumb with those is, m the vast majority of witches are women. And, uh, you know, that's what the, they're female, and uh, that's how we present them. And uh, there are there are some male witches, uh, but they are extremely rare in the world of the Pineys. So once I sort of set that up, and uh, we also set up spell books. Spell books is the deal. Uh, so the, the books are very dangerous in the wrong hands, whether that's the witches or uh, regular people. And uh, so that's where the power is. And once I sort of set that up, you can play with that world. You can play with the idea, why is it always women and what's the deal with that? And how do they recruit more witches or are you born a witch? Um, and then, you know, the male witches become very special. Why are they different? Uh, and then with the spell books being very dangerous, then you could explore that as well. They're very dangerous. How do you contain them? How do you keep them from being more dangerous? Uh, that sort of thing. So that's, those are themes within the world of the Pineys, as well as the deer that they hunt. Uh, the deer that breathe fire, eat human flesh, and commit unspeakable acts of evil uh, from, you know, the bowels of hell. Uh, so, they're really hell spawn. Okay. So, uh, that's what they hunt in uh, the Pineys. Uh, you know, it's uh, the setting is the the New Jersey Pine Barrens, where the Jersey Devil was born, but there wasn't just one Jersey Devil. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them as the portals of hell were opened up by Mother Leeds, and the Galloway family has been, uh, you know, the Galloway uh, Hunting Lodge was formed uh, the year after Mother Leeds did that, and then the hunters uh, now, ever since, have been hunting uh, the hell spawn in uh, the New Jersey Pine Barrens, and they've been hunting it for over 250 years. So we play around with that. And, um, you know, once you have those sort of concepts and rules, uh, then you can go from there. You, you can build upon that without breaking the rules, okay? Now, if you do break the rules, and once in a while you can, something special happens, you have to explain why this is special, why this doesn't normally happen, which we did in the first story and in the third story as well. Yes. So the, the first and the third story have a tie-in to each other regarding sort of breaking a rule in that world. Uh, it's a supernatural rule, so... Uh, those are a lot more flexible than, uh, say, sci-fi rules. Sci-fi rules tend to be based on science. So you got to do your research more. Uh, you know, if you add aliens into the mix, that can open up things a little more because you can create the rules amongst the alien race and that can then alter the scientific portion of it. So, you know, you've got a movie like Avatar and um, the rules there were altered by the fact that they were on an alien planet and that the aliens themselves are, you know, they're, they're stronger and more, more, uh, they're taller and more powerful than say the average human. So you could, you could do stuff with that. You, you, and you know, you could do stuff with their, typically they do stuff with aliens. They do stuff with their culture and their, their history. And so they made up a bunch of stuff and, uh, uh, you know, and it, it, it was dances with Smurfs as they said on South Park. <laughs> um, but, um, 
you know, you have to create these rules ahead of time for the most part. However, you can uh, keep it open enough that as you add more rules, uh, you can use them as plot devices in order to make things work one way or another. So in the Pineys number six, uh, I used, uh, we went back to the witches again uh, to create a new villain or uh, a, 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 a foe for the Galloway's cousins to fight. And uh, he's, he has a tie in to witches and why, you know, why he's powerful, let's say. I don't want to give it all away. It's coming out months and months from now. Um, <clears throat> the Pineys, by the way, available at Amazon.com, Amazon ebook, trade paperback, Kindle Unlimited is free. Uh, <clears throat> so when you're setting out to build your world, you don't, you want to get specific enough so you have something to work with, but not so specific that you're tied to it and that it constrains you from, you know, doing stuff. And you can add the rules as you see fit. Uh, now, you have to be wary that if you add a rule, like, uh, you know, the Pineys is comedy. So sometimes I've added rules to the world that were a good laugh. But then later I realized, oh, right, I got to keep doing that. <laughs> um, so I had to keep justifying, uh, you know, certain rules. Um, but, uh, you know, as long as you keep doing that, at least if you sort of acknowledge it, even if you downplay it a bit in your subsequent, you know, repeat, repeating scenes, uh, you're okay. So, for instance, there's a rule in the Pineys um, in order to kill one of the Hellspawn, you have to cut out its heart. So, and the reason I did that was it was kind of a funny scene because Lewis is the character who, uh, he's always getting, uh, uh, you know, he's always afraid and uh, he's always grossed out by what's happening and he's always shocked. He's, he's the fish out of water. So when they, when they, he, they tell him, oh, by the way, yeah, you got to cut out the, the Hellspawn's heart. He's like, oh my God, what does that look like? And it, it's like pretty much what you would expect. A lot of screaming and blood. <laughs> and, you know, he's just horrified. Like uh, Lewis is constantly horrified. But I had to keep doing that in the subsequent hunts. And sometimes I'd forget because, you know, I kind of did that for that bit for Lewis's horrified reaction. But then later I realized, oh yeah, they got to cut out the heart to kill this thing. So, you know, it's just something you need to be aware of. You have to do it all the time if it's a, if it's a steadfast rule. So keep that in mind. And then if you change the rule or, or if something different happens, you have to make sure it's very clear to your reader, okay, this is different. This, this, it, you know, and I've had scenes like that in the Pineys where it's like, okay, this is why they didn't have to cut the heart out of this particular Hellspawn because it died a different way. So, um, you also got to consider that in your world. But again, you don't have to write down every little thing. If you've got a book where your character's going to fight a dragon and you, you, the dragon's not appearing to the end of the book, you know, you can drop little hints about what the rules are with the dragon, but you don't have to lay it all out right at the beginning. You can, you can wait until you get to the fight and just sort of, you know, dangle out the rules as it is important for the fight and the conclusion of the story. So, you know, if it's important that the dragon ha have powers that allows him to uh, delve into the mind of the protagonist in order to tease him with, uh, uh, you know, mistakes he's made in the past, then you might give the dragon these mind powers and that, you know, it's not really so much that the dragon is a formidable physical opponent, but he's a formidable mental opponent that gets inside your brain and messes you up. And, uh, you know, if that is something that flies in the face of the classic dragon, that really shouldn't matter because you're doing your own version of it. I mean, you might consider changing the monster, I guess. You know, something else that you felt is more appropriate. But, you know, if it's a dragon and you wanted a dragon, 
That would be a that would be an interesting take, by the way. I think I think it's a pretty good take. You know, it's like a sort of a mental dragon rather than a physical one. You know, instead of breathing fire, he's, he gets inside your mind and messes you up or tries to. You have to defeat him in your mind before you can slay him. Mmm, mmm, pretty good, pretty good. Um, so the thing is, you may have to write down yourself some notes, and and that's what I do. I have a page for in the Pineys. I have to remember all the references to various other relatives that uh, the Galloways mention, who are who are long since passed in their very storied history, uh, who died in either horrible ways or, you know, completed epic feats of heroism. Uh, I have to remember all the names of the cousins, which sometimes gets a little confusing. And then at some point, I got to do like a massive family tree. And really figure them all out. But right now I'm still at the point where I don't have to do that. Because, you know, I'm in the modern era with the Galloways. And they, since their their family's been around, uh, at least in the United States, for over 250 years. You know, a lot could have happened. So I don't have to map out everybody's lineage. Because it would be pretty complicated by that point. But, you know, I need to keep in mind all the names of all the all the Galloways and why, you know, and who they are, because sometimes it's great, great uncle so-and-so or great aunt so-and-so and, you know, what their deal was. And maybe someday I will do a flashback to some of these other relatives and cousins and, uh, you know, to start off a story uh, and to launch into something. And that would be fun too. That'd be a great callback, right? You know, uh, to, to one of these um, <clears throat> heroic, uh, you know, Galloways of the past, and then, you know, maybe the, the Galloways of the present day have to sort of complete the mission uh, that the, the old Galloway had, had started or maybe left behind, and maybe they leave behind clues for them to suss out. Uh, so there's, there's all sorts of stuff you can play with, but, you know, it, it really all comes down to, like everything else, structure. So you want to structure your world accordingly. Uh, you know, with a fantasy world, you know, the big thing is how does magic work? Uh, you know, what, where are we in terms of dragons? Where are we in terms of, you know, magical creatures? Where are we in terms of technology? Um, and how does technology, if there is more than the medieval, classic medieval technology, how does that match up with the magic? Uh, same thing with science fiction, right? You want to you want to say, well, how far along are we here? Do we have, do we have just spaceships or, or do we have androids? Do we have laser pistols? You know, are, are, do we have alien races or, uh, you know, how, how crazy are these alien races? Do, is there just one or are there, you know, millions of them? And we're, we're, you know, we're 10,000 years in the future, you know, with various alliances throughout the universe. So, you kind of want to get the basics mapped out and then, you know, map the details out as you go, as your story works out. But just keep in mind that these, in your world, your world building is just a bunch of bells and whistles. At the end of the day, stories are about people. They're not about your world. And even in sort of an epic story like Isaac Asimov's Foundation Trilogy, you know, really it's about the people within that foundation. Yes, they're part of this huge, epic sci-fi story, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can break those down to man versus man, man versus society, man versus himself, and you want to be able to do that. So it's just as valid to have a story of, you know, a guy versus, say, a corrupt government in medieval times, in a fantasy world, that it is far into the future uh, of the Foundation trilogy, you know, 100,000 years into the future. Um, those two stories are basically the same. You're just telling them in different settings. You know, we used to have a, we used to joke when we played RPGs, we used to like to play Dungeons and Dragons, but we also played Gamma World once in a while. And the joke was Gamma World is just D&D &D with different weapons. So when you're talking to fantasy versus sci-fi, you're sort of in the same realm there. And, uh, you know, the genre stuff 
is where I like to live. I mean, you can do the same thing with grounded dramas. Um, you know, you, you, you don't really build a world in the classic sense. You're, you're just using the regular world, but that world may have certain rules to it. So for instance, Fight Club is a world unto itself because there were rules of Fight Club. What's the first rule of Fight Club? <laughs> That's right. So, um, you know, even if it's grounded in reality, there are going to be some rules. It's just that those rules won't be things like, well, you know, magic or, you know, uh, bending the laws of physics and, and, and time traveling. That stuff is not part of the rules. The rules are going to be how these people live and interact. Uh, it, it, you know, it could be some kind of cultural kind of thing. Uh, it, it could be, you know, even in a detective series, there are certain certain rules in that some detectives live by a code uh, or a bounty hunter or, or even, you know, a, a guy who's just a criminal. Uh, he might have a code and uh, there's going to be certain rules. There's certain rules to, I write a lot of mafia stories, so, so there are rules to the mafia. And um, in that world, certain things go and certain things don't. And just like when you break the rules in a fantasy story or a, a sci-fi story, if you break the rules in the mafia story, you better have a good explanation as to why, or there better be consequences if you don't, you know? Because if you break the ro rules in the world of the mafia, uh, the hammer comes down and you could be killed or you could be punished and, you know, bad, bad things are going to happen. So go out there and build your worlds, writers, and uh, just remember not to get too caught up in the rules. Just make them consistent throughout. Because even if you build, say, a very grounded reality like a mafia world and you get it wrong, as long as they're consistent, um, people will be okay with that up to a point. You might have to then go in and say, well, you know, I didn't really know anything about the mafia and this is my version of the mafia, as long as those rules are consistent, you know, people are going to be okay with that and the story internally uh, should work. Anyhow, that's my screenwriting tip for today. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments for the next one. Uh, and please check out my books, Wokistan and the Pineys at Amazon.com. We will see you next time.